Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This time we'll be ranking all the boards from Super Mario Party Jamboree. I will say I think this may be the first Mario Party where I don't flat out hate a board, so that's a good start. To understand my rankings of the boards, it's important to know that I grew up with the GameCube games and I'm used to 20 turns being the standard game, not 10. While ranking these boards, I played each of them five times, twice on 10 turns, once on 15, and twice on 20 to get a feel on the actual standard game length and my preference for game length. So let's begin! In 7th place we have Rainbow Gal. I'm just messing with you, it's Rollum Raceway. On this board you enter a vehicle and race your way through this circular board. Imagine a Mary Party board where you enter a vehicle and don't completely hate it. Wow! The star is in one of two places on the board and a split path differentiates the star placement. This means you must be strategic when picking a lane to ensure someone else won't beat you to the start and force you to make another lap before reaching it. I don't understand how this is a 3 star difficulty course. If Mario's Rainbow Castle is a 1 star difficulty, this at most should be 2. The reason I have this board so low in my rankings is actually a problem I have with the entire game, which is its economy. It's way too easy to save up coins, there's too many ways to earn coins, and items are just too cheap. This makes Boo extremely overpowered as it's very easy to afford a star steal and in most boards Boo is placed in a main route and is very easily reached. This board is the worst offender. In every game I played on this board I've had on average 3 stars stolen per game. That is way too brutal. Boo should be hard to save up for and Boo really should be placed on a path that's a bit out of the way and not on the main route. For that reason, and because the board design makes games feel way too repetitive, I have this in 7th. In 6th place we have Mario's Rainbow Castle. This board is a linear one with a few deviations that prolong your path. At the end either Toad will be there, which he will give you a star for 20 coins, or Bowser will be there who will give you a Zatar, which doesn't do anything for 20 coins. Event spaces will rotate Bowser and Toad. If you are playing 20 turns, this is not a bad board at all. Strategy plays a good part of this board. The problem is that the standard is 10 turns. They took an original Mario Party board which was designed for games with more turns than 10 and did not deviate it to account for its 10 standard turn games. In the 5 games I played, because of the event spaces and length of board, I found that the first star typically is bought on average in the 5th or 6th round. In a 10 turn game, that is not a lot of time to regroup if an initial strategy fails, and it's very possible that players only get one shot at getting to the end, which is not enough in a game that should balance luck and strategy. I put this above Roland Raceway because this board is good for 20 turns, and the fact that Boo is not on a main path means that he is only reached if players deviate to him or are trying to avoid Bowser, which lessens how overpowered Boo is. Before we move on to the top 5, if you are enjoying this video I would truly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button as we are on a journey to hit a thousand subscribers. Thanks and let's get back to the rankings. In 5th place we have Goomba Lagoon. This is the first board in this ranking that is a standard board where stars are 20 coins and move around the map. The unique thing about this board is that every 2 turns the tide rises or lowers which can erase some of the paths or reveal them. This concept is cool and can make for good strategies but can also be very annoying if you are trapped by high tides on an island. Players who go before you could keep you there with tide shells. Say you get trapped by the tides on an island and then when they go down someone uses it to bring high tides back for 2 more rounds. You would be stuck there for 4 turns or 40% of a 10 turn game. That's way too brutal. Also with the economy of the game, having 2 boo spots really makes it overpowered to steal stars. Although I do like that they do appear to be out of the way and very affected by the high tides which does lessen the blow slightly. Given the brutalness of the tide shells and how players can be trapped for a big portion of a 10 turn game is why this is getting 5th place even though I really like the idea of this board. In 4th place we have Western Land, another standard board where the star costs 20 coins and moves around the board. This board is originally from Mario Party 2. I think a lot of long term Mario Party fans will be shocked to see this fairly low in the rankings. I grew up with the GameCube games and while I have some good memories with this board, 
I'm not as nostalgic as someone who would have grown up with the N64 games. I like some of the changes, like the extra path going into the middle of the map, and the, the fact that you have to land on an event space to call a Hootenanny. Again though, I feel like they took a Mary Party 2 board and did not change it to suit the new game. Changing the gate path so that it loops back to Boo is a bit harsh considering there's already two Boos on the board, and the new item to call a train makes it so that it is extremely difficult to use the outside of the map without being sent back to the start. I do like to see the old board return though, and I would like to also see some old boards return again, hopefully some GameCube ones though too. In third place, we have Mega Wiggler's Tree Party. This is the starting board of Super Mario Party Jamboree, and it's a standard board where you pay 20 coins for a star, and the star moves around the map. This may seem high for a starting board, and I admit I always rank starting boards a bit differently than the others. A starting board should be an easy board that introduces new players to the game, while also having unique gimmicks to prepare players for future boards. Starting boards should also always be a standard board. Mega Wiggler's Tree Party satisfies all three of those conditions for me, making it a very good starting board. The giant wiggler in the middle being moved by the bell item or an event space creating two different paths is simple for new players to understand and is a cool idea. It also means that the one boot on the board is not as accessible as players may go on wiggler as a way to get to the stars faster. I think this is the third best starting board in the Mario Party series, right behind Mario Party 5's Toy Dream and Mario Party 6's Towering Treetop. Although, once again, I might be biased by the GameCube. In second place, we have King Bowser's Keep, the hardest board of the game. This board has a lot going on. Every three turns, Bowser will spit fireballs onto two spaces in the conveyor belt, turning them into Bowser spaces. There are also Mecha Koopa mini boss fights where players have to roll high enough to defeat them, or they will lose coins. This board is really great for 10 turns as there is a lot going on to keep you engaged and is extremely harsh, which is great for a Bowser themed board. When the length of the game increases to 20, the Bowser spaces can add up and be pretty difficult. Even though it has two boo spots, one is behind a gate and the other is on one of many paths, making both harder to reach and more of a strategy than something you just come across. The reason I did not put this first is because with everything going on, 20 turn games can take forever to finish. Although I do like that sometimes when a Bowser space gets landed on, Bowser just says screw it and takes a star. Bowser should really behave like that and I'm glad that they are leaning into it. And in first place, we have Rainbow Galleria. This is a really unique board with a unique design. Every so often, a flash sale appears, reducing costs and causing them all to come packed with shoppers. I love this board because the board is fun to play no matter how long of a game you want. I also like that the problems I have with the economy are really reduced in this board, and the fact that Boo is out of the way for the majority of the game, unless one star appears there, means that Boo is not overpowered. This board reminds me the most of the old Mario parties, which is a massive plus. I also really like that almost everything is triggered with an event or an event space, which speeds up the game. I truly believe that Rainbow Galleria is the best board in Super Mario Party Jamboree and is the best board that ND Cube has ever made. And that is my entire ranking of the Super Mario Party Jamboree boards. If you liked this video and want to see more, please hit that subscribe button. And why not check out this video where I ranked the 20 best free for all mini games in the entire Mario Party series. Bye now.